Good afternoon and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition webinar series. My name is Lee Doubleday and I'm the president or I'm the director of operations here at the Imagine America Foundation. I'm excited about today's career topic, which is STEM careers in the transportation industry with Universal Technical Institute or UTI. UTI is this country's leading provider of high quality career focused education at 12 locations nationwide. UTI is also a 20 year sponsor of the Imagine America scholarship and award programs, having provided admissions based financial aid to more than 15,000 enrolling Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time from our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation and our scholarship program and how your students can apply for a scholarship to attend Universal Technical Institute uh, to our website, which is www.imagine-america.org. Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Joining us today to discuss in detail the looming technician shortage and how UTI is helping meet this need is Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle is a nationally recognized expert in this area with an extensive K-12 background, so you're in great hands today. But before turning the program over to Dr. Coyle, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with question and answers at the end of the presentation. Once we finish these remarks, we're gonna move directly into today's presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation or approximately 2.25 p.m., I will then present any questions offered by the participants and will address as many questions as possible providing written responses and follow-up emails. We'll have a hard close at 2.30 p.m. So without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Dr. Coyle. Dr. Coyle, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Lee, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking a little bit of your time out this afternoon to join me. I'll get right into the agenda. We have, uh, it's a threefold agenda, challenges facing the workforce, followed up by opportunities in the transportation industry, and then we'll close with Universal Technical Institute's career pathways. There we go, a little glitch. Okay, I always like to start off with the changing workforce. Um, the workforce has changed dramatically from the 20th century to the 21st century. In the 20th century, we're very much an agricultural manufacturing economy um, with a little bit of service mixed in there. And today you can see we're almost totally service with a little bit of agriculture, manufacturing and high tech. You might look at that and say, wow, is that, you know, really? But you, you all know that's true because you've all experienced, if you own a house, a car, a washing machine, you know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to getting somebody to come out and service your appliances or your equipment, uh, let alone someone who's certified. You might look at agriculture and say, wow, are we in trouble here? We dropped from 41% to 2%. No, we're not in any trouble at all. We're feeding more with two than we are with 41. How we do it is with technology. But with technology comes service, because you have to be able to service that technology. A recent survey was done of 150,000 students, grades 6 through 12, and they were asked, how many of you would like a skilled trades career? And that's right, 3% said, yeah, sign me up for a skilled trades career. The same group of students then was asked, how many of you would like a STEM career? And over 45% said, that's what I'm looking for right there. Not skilled trades, I'm looking for STEM. There's the disconnect. Students do not see the connection between STEM and skilled trades. Unfortunately, we have educators who also don't see that connection either. They tend to think of STEM as white collar rather than blue collar. I like to call it all collars because STEM literally permeates our economy and uh, permeates our educational paradigm. STEM career growth has been phenomenal. Since 2017, um, STEM jobs will grow by 13% and projected to grow even more than that. I think that's a very conservative estimate. I think we'll see more like 15 to 16%. All other jobs will grow at about a 9% clip. But the astounding difference is when you start looking at hourly incomes. With a non-STEM career, you can expect to make on average a little over $19 an hour. With a STEM career, almost $39 an hour. 
It becomes even more significant when you look at it over the course of a year, where a non-STEM is over 38,000, a STEM career almost 87,000. Then you multiply that over the course of a career, which is 15, 20, 25, 30, maybe 35 years. That's a significant, significant amount of income differential there. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have a STEM career in order to make good money. There are good paying non-STEM careers too, but the statistics point out that the greater number are in STEM careers. A little over 20% of the jobs in this country right now require a bachelor's degree, bachelor's degree for entry. You know, pretty, pretty astounding. But the more astounding statistic is that almost half of the college grads that we have today go into occupations where they didn't even need a college degree. They're not using their degree. They spent all that time, energy, and money into getting a bachelor's degree that they find out that they didn't need or they're, they're simply not using it. That's why we have to do a better job with career readiness and career placement to make sure we're giving these young men and young ladies direction on what they absolutely need to fulfill their dreams. I talk to educators all the time about the old smart versus the new smart. Um, there's a significant difference. If you look at the old smart, it all starts with the school. You know, and that's what we all used to see all the time, you know, get into the best college you possibly can. We used to focus on that resume, that resume that's going to look good to get us into that prestigious school. Then when we get there, we figure out what it is we want to, we want to do. You might laugh at that and say, well, wait a minute, don't, we, don't people usually know what their major is? Well, they think they do, but then they get to school and they change it two or three times. I did. I'm sure some of you did as well. So once they figure out what it is what they, that they want to do, if they figure that out, then they say, here I am, I've got, I've got degree in hand, hire me. And we know that just doesn't work today, just not very efficient. You know, you might even look at this and say, um, um, you know, is this even real, Steve? Does this really even go on? And well, I would, I would refer you to the recent admission scandal that just, that's still going on. In fact, Netflix, I just saw this morning, is coming out with a documentary on it, you know, where parents tried to bribe their sons and daughters into schools, prestigious schools like Stanford and USC, by paying them amount of money or lying on documents. What did they get for their efforts? Well, they got jail time and fines. You know, and what's really ironic is that many of, the, of their um, children didn't even want to go to college in the first place, but the parents wanted them there. So we moved to the new smart. The, the most significant difference in the new smart versus the old smart is the student themselves. What do we ask every little kid in this country? What do you want to be when you grow up? Why do we stop asking that question? Why not continue to ask that question when they move into middle school and into high school? You know, we need to focus on the student. What are they good at? I used to always say your passion could be your paycheck, but what if you're not very good at your passion? You know, we have to think about what are students good at? What are they willing to put a lot of time into? That's what we want to focus on. Then let's focus on what program do they need? Do they need a bachelor's degree? Maybe. Or do they need an internship? Or do they need competency-based credentials like a, a diploma or some kind of a certificate? You know, we let the student guide that. And then in the end, we find the school for them. Why would we send a student to, to a major college or university when maybe they want to be a cosmetologist? Not saying they couldn't get it there, but there might be a better way to get it and a cheaper way to get it as well. So that's why career readiness, career pathways, once again, very important when we deal with students. The rule of 127. It's a very simple rule, but it applies. If you add one, two, and seven together, you get 10. For every 10 careers that are out there right now available, only one out of 10 requires an advanced degree. Two out of 10 require a bachelor's degree. Seven of the 10 careers available today are in demand today, only require competency-based credentials, meaning a certificate or diploma or an associate's degree. Seven out of 10, yet, we are pushing students into colleges and universities at almost a 70% clip. So you see what we're doing is exactly the opposite of what the economy is dictating to us we should be doing. 
I educate educators. That's what I do all, all across the country. But you as educators, you're educating parents and students. And I know parents can be tough. They're a tough sell. I get questions from, uh, from school counselors all the time. Hey, help me with, with uh, parents. And I've got some stuff for you later in the presentation that might help you. But we have to educate stu students and parents in the fact that skilled trades and STEM are one and the same. You know, these are good careers, well-paying careers. The second part we have to make them understand is that not every student needs to go to college or university. Some do, but some need other avenues. That's why I love to use the word post-secondary instead of college, you know, because post-secondary takes in all aspects. And then finally, we have to remember what are employers looking for? You know, isn't the reason we're getting this education is so we can get hired? So let's find out what they're looking for. I can tell you what they're looking for. Competency-based credentials. That's what they're looking for. The second part of our agenda today is opportunities in the transportation industry. I don't care if you have a car, a truck, a boat, an ATV, a motorcycle. I don't care. They're all rolling computers. They, they just are. The technology on this equipment today is amazing. Some people get really excited about all the bells and whistles that are on these cars, all the cool little gadgets that are on there. But when I think of the technology, I think of safety. Let's take, for instance, the backup camera. We've all heard the horror stories of somebody backing over a child, sometimes their own child, because they didn't know they were back there. With the backup camera, that's virtually eliminated that. You know, and we become to rely on it. <laughs> if you're like me, I've got my old Ford F-150 pickup that doesn't have the backup camera. When I get in it, it's like I'm lost. I, I look towards the dash and it's just not there. We get used to it, but it saves lives. Another example is the blind spot indicators. We've all gone down the highway and been honked at. You know, like, where'd that person come from? I didn't even see him because they were in our blind spot. But with sensors around the car, we know what's going on around us. So we can prevent a collision and possibly an injury or a death from that. So, you know, I can go on and on with all the technology. But the problem is we have to have technicians to work on these things. It's all cool, but it's going to break down and it has to be fixed. Another growing problem we have is with farmers. In the agricultural industry, all this technology is there too. But farmers are, are shying away from the new stuff because they can't work on it themselves and they're worried they won't be able to find the technicians to work on it. So they're looking for older equipment. They can't afford to be down in their fields. So once again, another reason why we need the uh, technicians in this field. There are over 1.3 billion vehicles in the world worldwide and 273 million of those right here in the United States. It's projected by 2028, there will be 1.1 million technician positions available. 1.1 million, that's amazing, that number. And then the third part of our agenda today is Universal Technical Institute's Career Pathways. Who is UTI? Well, Lee gave you a little bit of an overview of, of who we are. We're the leading provider of technicians in the transportation industry. We have 12 campuses nationwide. We graduate, or, or I'm sorry, place over four out of five of our graduates into their chosen field. And notice I said chosen. I didn't say into a field, their chosen field, what they wanna be, what they wanna be when they grow up. And we've had over 220,000 graduates in our now 56 year history. We train in eight different STEM programs, auto, diesel, collision, motorcycle, marine, NASCAR, CNC, and welding. You can't just come to UTI, you have to be invited. So how does that happen? Through a personal interview with the student and their family. Why? First, we wanna make sure that not only are we a good fit for them, but that they are a good fit for us. We wanna make sure everybody understands what's expected of each other. But the second part of it is, we want to find out what is that student's, what's their goals, their dreams? What do they want to be when they grow up? You know, what do they love to do? And we explore that to try to find the right option for them. What you see here are eight programs, but within these eight programs, there are hundreds of, of uh, career opportunities. Let's say, for instance, you love cars, but you don't want to turn a wrench. You could be a service rider. That's the person you see when you first go into the dealership and they, they write up your, your problem, they ask you some questions and then they send you on to a, a bay 
for a technician to work on your car. There's an avenue. Or you go into the insurance business. You go, what? Sell insurance? No. As a claims adjuster. You know, when you hit a deer, you see what's happened on the outside of the car. That's pretty easy. But what you don't see are all the sensors and all, all the intricate um, computers and things that are messed up on the inside of the car. It's going to take a trained technician to find that. That's why insurance companies love our graduates because they will know those things. So that's what we do in the interview. We want to explore what, what students are and show them some options that they might have that they might want to go into. Industry aligned technology, what does that mean? Well, first of all, let me start off with the fact that with the pandemic this year, we didn't change how we taught. We had to change uh, you know, a few things about how we taught, but we already did the hands-on and the online classroom. We already did that because we're aligned with industry because that's what industry does. You know, we're an essential industry. So we didn't go away because of the pandemic. We kept going through it because the need for technicians was still great. So we had to keep producing. So that this kind of tech, uh, uh, industry aligned technology, that's what the dealerships are looking for. So that's why we get our students prepared for that. So when they graduate from UTI, they're ready to move right into a dealership and pick up right where they left off. And then our education model is pretty simple. We teach competency-based credentials. So we do one class at a time for three weeks. You're immersed in brakes. That's all you're going to do. And then we move on to other parts of the vehicle as we build the technician from the ground up. As I said, we did have to make some changes due to CDC compliance, and we did. We have assigned doors where people can enter and leave. We do temperature checks of everyone that comes into the building. We require face coverings. We reduce lab sizes so we could meet the social distancing and the six foot separation that CDC recommended. We require the washing of hands. We clean and disinfect constantly. And then we offer phone support for those people that still don't feel safe coming into the campus. They can still get the support that they need. You know, as I said, we're essential. So the need for technicians went on. Now we love to do in-person presentations, but many school districts had to shut down and go virtual. So we adapted a virtual format as well. We use uh, Microsoft Teams, we use Zoom. We can also use uh, your platform if you have one that you prefer. And we talk to the students about, you know, different um, pathways that they can take. As you can see on the right, there's some of the of the slides, some of them that you've seen today even, uh, that we present to the students. But the most important thing about this is that it's good for all students to see this. Oftentimes, uh, school counselors will say, okay, well, we'll do an interested only, or, uh, you know, we, may we, I'll just see who's interested in auto. No, these presentations are important for all of your students to see because we explore all kinds of career pathways. We do a Dr. John Holland assessment. So it's very important that all your students uh, see these things. And, if, you know, if you'll reach out to me, I can help you to get these set up. We have a national presence. That's important for two reasons. Number one, we're known nationwide. You walk into a dealership, they're going to know who UTI is. The second part is for career placement. Let's say you go to, go to school at our Bloomfield campus, but then you want to relocate to Florida. You could do that because we have UTI there as well, and we can help you to get placed into a, a different location. Once again, referring back to that national presence. We have over 35 industry relationships. These are the big dogs of the industry. As I often say, we're not preparing students for Jiffy Lube. We're preparing students for BMW, for Ford, for GM, these kind of companies. And we're always adding to this total. Just recently, we added for the, in the agricultural industry, Agco is now an alliance partner of ours. So we're pretty excited about that. And we continue to add new partners as we move through. One of the things that we're very proud of is our TRIP employer package, Tuition Reimbursement Incentive Program. And what I decided to do this spring was include a couple of packages so you could see exactly what they look like. The Hendrick Advantage, for instance, this company has 100 dealers representing 29 brands. They currently are operating in 13 states and they have over 10,000 employees. The package they offer our graduates is this, tuition reimbursement, $300 a month on top of their salary. They can use that to pay off student loans. They can get a tool voucher for $200 a month for 10 months. That's $2,000 toward 
towards tools, which are essential to that, especially when they're coming out, you know, and they're, they, you know, getting into their first career. That's, that's important. Relocation available on a case by case basis. I remember hearing a service manager saying, I'm not going to lose a good quality student or employee based, you know, over a couple thousand dollars. I'm going to make sure I get that, that uh, technician. And then ASC reimbursement, paid factory training, and then a comprehensive benefits package. Another great example is Penske. This company, over 150 locations, 40 world-class brands, a Fortune 500 company, their package, tuition reimbursement, $420 per month, once again, on top of their salary to pay off student loans. That's for 48 months. Tool program, $2,000 reimbursement, a 10-year bonus, $3,000 paid after 48 months of employment. To give you some ideas of how big our TRIP program is, we have over 4,700 participating employer locations. Average trip package is almost $14,000. Average tool package, almost $3,000. Average relocation, $2,000. Average sign-on bonus, over $3,000. Average retention bonus is over $4,000. So you see the industry is willing to invest to get top quality technicians. And so that's why we urge our graduates, work hard while you're in school, because there is a catch here. They want the best. They're not just going to take someone who skips school all the time and did average in school. They want the best. So we encourage our students to be the best you can be. <clears throat> we like to show off our graduates. You know, they're, they're successful out in the field, but we also like to use them to show our future students what to expect because that's their peers. So they're going to listen to what they say, you know, rather than if we tell them something. So it's important that that... Um, uh, that our graduates, we have them attend our events so they can talk to future students about what to expect in the industry. You know, we are Title IV funded, so we require a FAFSA to see if you qualify for financial aid. We offer over $15 million in scholarships. We also offer housing grants, institutional grants, of course, the TRIP package I just talked to you about, and then third-party programs that can help cover emergency expenses. You know, you're the catalyst here. And what we want to do is we want to partner with you. I'm a retired educator. I know what you guys do on a daily basis. Although this year has been tough. I know it has. And um, what we want to do is partner with you. We know how difficult it's been to keep kids engaged and involved in school this year. So we have a what we love to call a buffet of opportunities that we use, um, you know, that we offer uh, counselors to help with their students. These are all complimentary. But there we have virtual tours, we have industry field days, we have uh, presentations, career pathways, career readiness. We just want to uh, partner with you any way that we possibly can. You can follow us online. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, and of course our website, uti.edu. And then I'd like to close with, you know, as I, I promised earlier, some help with parents. You know, what can we do? Um, I get that all the time. Hey, Steve, you're preaching to the choir. I get what you're saying. But man, these parents are tough. And you're right, they are. So here's some suggestions. Promote your STEM program. You know, promote what you're doing out there. You know, um, rebrand your programs a little bit. Make it more exciting, not only for the students, but also for the parents. Make it where they want to look into it as well. Host an open house for parents and middle school students. Don't just have them walking around just looking at things. Have them participate. Get involved. Have some kind of a STEM activity that they can do. If you need some help with some ideas for that, reach out to me. I can help you. Involve industry. Industry would love to partner with you. And they have the resources to make that happen. So don't hesitate to reach out to industry or go to them. They'll, they'll host you for an open house or something like that, a, a tour, something on those lines. Career Pathways Exploration Days. Let me say that again. Career Pathways Exploration Days. You notice I didn't say college fair. Because when you say college fair, that's all they think is college and universities. So have Career Pathways Exploration Days to cover everything. I'll have other uh, uh, colleagues tell me, oh, well, when we say college, we mean everything. Well, you got to remember, perception is everything. So what does the student hear? They hear college. I'm not saying college is bad, but it's one avenue. There are many others out there. So have a Career Pathways Exploration Day. That way you can reach all of your students. And then finally, celebrate all their successes. You know, not just the, the, the guy that got the full ride scholarship to go play football or the young lady that got a full ride scholarship to go play basketball somewhere. 
Celebrate all your students' successes because that brings in the parents too. All parents are proud of their kids. They want them to do well. They want them to be recognized for their successes. And every one of your students has something they're good at. It's up to us as educators to find out what that is. So there's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me by phone, by email, um, carrier pigeon, whatever works for you. Reach out to me. I'd love to hear your comments and, and questions. Uh, if I can help you in any way, that's what I'm here for, to partner with you. That's what UTI does. We partner with you guys. Um, I, I just want to thank you for spending a little bit of your afternoon with me, and I wish you the best of luck in the rest of your school year, and I hope to hear from some of you soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dr. Coyle. We are now going to open this up for the Q&A portion of our presentation. I have also thrown up a poll question. If you would like us to send you an email with any upcoming virtual events for your seniors, uh, please indicate so on the poll so that we know who to reach out to with more information about upcoming virtual events. And I was actually talking to Dr. Coyle before this presentation. It does look like you have an upcoming uh, virtual event uh, in the New Jersey Bloomfield area. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, that's that's true. We have a... Um, um, a, uh, we have tours, they're virtual tours that we do weekly from the campus. All you have to do is reach out to Kevin Giro. He's the regional admissions director at the Bloomfield campus, and he can make sure that you are enrolled for that. Okay, um, we have another question. This person wants to know what percentage of the students receive enough scholarship and grant money to cover the full cost of tuition? Well, that, that's kind of, that's, that's a great question. It's kind of tough for me to answer. <laughs> I would yeah. say, um, because we have so many avenues, um, as far as like for the trip packages or anything, I, you know, uh, not every student's going to get those because the student has to do their part and work hard while right. they're in school to make that happen. But we do offer, you know, like, of course, we participate with Imagine America. We have a lot of scholarships in-house that we, that we use. And of course, our institutional grants and our housing grants to help it. I will say this we will never lose a student because of money. We always find a way to package our students in some way. Great. Okay, um, next question. This person wants to know more about is, are there any GPA or SAT score requirements to attend UTI or is it just the high school diploma? Uh, no, we do not require ACT or SAT. We encourage students to take that, obviously. I'm an educator. I love to see what they score, but it's not required for entry into UTI, nor is a certain grade point average. When we meet with the student in that interview that I talked about earlier, we're looking for work ethic. We're looking for good attendance. We're looking for that, that desire, you know, and the coachability and that kind of thing. That's what we're really looking for uh, for entrance into UTI. Gotcha. Okay. Um, now this, this question, this, this is a question we get almost on every single one of these uh, presentations that we do, but they would like to know uh, how UTI compares to community colleges. Um, can you sp speak to that a little bit? Sure. Well, I get that question a lot because they say, well, you know, don't you do the same thing as community college? No. First of all, we do manufacturer specific training. Uh, community college is going to do more of a general type of training. Now, I'm not saying that's bad, some students, that's what they want, but some students want the more specific manufacturer training. Number two is the time you're going to spend. You're going to be in the community college two to three years. You're going to be at UTI about a year. So we get out, many of our graduates are 19 years old and they're out in the field working. And then, of course, the trip package that I talked about earlier. That's a huge opportunity for students to get their, their education paid for uh, because of the, uh, the willingness of the employer to give them additional funds to help pay off their student loans and help them to relocate and all those things. So those combined together, you know, um, that that equalizes us pretty much with community colleges on cost. Awesome. Okay. All right, great. I do uh, just want to take some time to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, we will be sending out the recording of this presentation likely tomorrow morning. Um, actually, it does look like we got one more question that came in. Uh, are there any additional training programs and information technology computer science programs that you might be considering to offer via UTI programs in the future since technology is such a big part of our day-to-day? Uh, -day? Oh, we're always expanding. For instance, we expand into CNC, which, which is computer numerical control. Um, and of course, the, it, even in the transportation industry itself, you know, we're starting to make a shift yeah. now into electric cars. And so we're going to have to shift our training to that as well, because 
they're going to become more prevalent. And, you know, and I do see us in the future moving into more uh, technological fields because you're exactly right. They are becoming more prominent. Yeah, and, and you had actually mentioned even earlier in the presentation that computers are already rolling computers. Like, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, cars are already rolling computers. I can't imagine what it's going to be like five years from now. I mean, it's only going that direction. So I'm sure it's already part of the curriculum you teach. Exactly. Uh, yeah, because you need those machines to read what's going on with the with the car. Um, you need to learn how to use those. So great, great question. Um, okay, great. Uh, I just want to let everybody know we're going to be sending out the recording. There is a survey. Uh, if you would, wouldn't mind answering the survey when you leave this presentation uh, today, there's, it's about four questions long, really helps us understand uh, how we may be able to improve this presentation. So uh, any feedback is, is very much appreciated. But before closing, I just want to thank all of our participants for taking time out of their day today. I'd also like to thank Dr. Coyle for sharing with us today's presentation and encourage each and every one of you to contact him directly with any future questions. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Dr. Coyle and myself, I wanna thank you and goodbye.